So now that we can express the received vector y in terms of the channel H matrix between the transmit antennas and the receive antennas and the transmitted streams x1 and x2 which form the vector x we are now interested in deriving the MIMO equalizer the block shown over here in which we process the received signals which have additive white Gaussian noise in which we obtain estimates of the transmitted streams x1 and x2 and of course in this case we're always dealing with a subcarrier at a time so the key is to derive the equalizer block shown here we will first derive the zero forcing MIMO equalizer and then derive the minimum mean square error MIMO equalizer and also point out the maximum likelihood equalizer these are for what we call open loop MIMO systems we'll talk about closed loop MIMO systems using beam forming later so the idea is to derive the algorithm for the equalizer shown here before we proceed let's present a theorem if A is a n by n matrix n by n where in our case for a 2 by 3 system m would be equal to 3 and n would equal 2 n would be the number of transmit antennas and m would be the number of receive antennas so A is typically a rectangular matrix not necessarily a square matrix so consider the case where A is an m by n matrix where m is greater than n if m equals n then we just have a square matrix and consider that its rank is equal to n then the solution to the equation a times vector x equals vector b that minimizes the sum of the squares of the residuals r transpose times r where r is the difference between the vector b and a x is given by the following formula x equals to parenthesis a transpose times a inverse times a transpose times b now in this theorem we are assuming that we have available a and b and we are trying to find out vector x such that if we form the vector r which is a difference between b and a times x the sum of the square of the individual error residuals is minimized recall that r transpose times r is just equal to the sum of the square of the individual elements within r and that's the term we're trying to minimize now we're going to show the proof in a minute but consider this expression over here this part of the expression we will denote this expression by a superscript plus or a plus and that's equal to parenthesis a transpose a inverse a transpose and this is called the pseudo inverse of the matrix a now note that we're dealing with a rectangular matrix so unlike a square matrix we don't have a direct inverse however note that a transpose a is a square matrix and we can form its inverse so this is very important the matrix a plus which is a pseudo inverse of the matrix a times the vector b will give our estimate x such that we minimize the sum of the square of the residuals in the case of the MIMO system we're dealing with b is the received signals y x are the for example for a 2 by 3 system the two transmit streams x1 and x2 a is the channel matrix H which is assumed to be known we obtain through a training mechanism that we will get into in detail much later before we proceed let's go ahead and give a proof to the theorem that we just presented let's form the matrix S which is equal to R transpose times R and R is equal to B minus AX 
So if we take B minus AX transpose times B minus AX, this is the term that we're trying to minimize. If we take the transpose in and multiply through, we get the expression shown over here. Now we're trying to find X such that we minimize this expression. So we take the derivative of S with regard to the vector X and we set it equal to zero. And if we do that, we obtain the expression shown over here. A transpose AX equals A transpose B. And in order to derive this expression, you will need to use the identities shown over here. These are a set of identities for vectors and matrices. And we'll use these identities throughout. And there are many more identities we might use. And they're all available in the matrix cookbook, which is uh, by the authors shown over here. And you can obtain that through the internet. So for example, we're going to have a term x transpose times a, where a is a constant. And we're taking the derivatives with respect to the vector x. And that is equal to a. We also have terms where we have x transpose times bx and we're taking the derivative with respect to x and we get this expression over here. Going back here we see these expressions exist and this expression here so when we take the derivatives we can consult these identities and we do obtain this expression for the x that will minimize the square of the residuals. So we take uh, both sides of this expression and multiply them times the inverse of A transpose A. We get that X is equal to the pseudo inverse of the matrix A times B. So this is the important theorem that we will use in order to derive the zero forcing equalizer for a MIMO system. And as a reference, please uh, refer to Noble's book, Applied Linear Algebra. So going back to our received vector expression, we had that Y receive vector y is equal to h the channel matrix h matrix times x the vector composed of the carrier x1 and x2 corresponding to transmit path number one and transmit path number two so if we look at this expression we assume we know h which is the channel matrix and we obtain that through a training so we have preambles that we send to the receiver during the training during acquisition and training in which we obtain an estimate of H. So we're going to assume that we know H and of course we know Y which is the vector of the individual received chains. So we know Y, we know H and we're trying to obtain X. Ignoring the noise term here which is a fact of the zero forcing algorithm that we'll talk about. So if we ignore the noise N then the expression Y equals HX is very similar to this is exactly equivalent to this expression ax equals b where a is h and b is y so we need to obtain x using knowledge of a and b or h and y which of course we obtain through the pseudo inverse of a or in our case the pseudo inverse of the of the channel h matrix so w the pseudo inverse of the channel matrix h is equal to H Hermitian H inverse times H Hermitian. And of course, we're dealing with complex matrices. So instead of transpose, we have the Hermitian, which is the transpose plus conjugation. So in order to perform the equalization, we take the receive vector Y and pre-multiply times the pseudo inverse of the channel matrix H, which we obtain through training and we obtain an estimate of X. Now Y has additive noise component vector N. So if we take a look at this and let's pre-multiply Y by the matrix W. If we do that, then we get W times Y equals W times H. Now if we look at W, we see that if we multiply it by pre-multiply times H, we get H Hermitian H and here we have the inverse of H Hermitian H, so we get the identity matrix over here. So we have the identity matrix, which gives us X back. However, we get another term, which is W times N, in which case we have X plus a noise term. So we have estimates of X that are corrupted by the fact that we have noise in the channel. Now if the noise is equal to zero and H Hermitian H is not ill-conditioned, then it is clear that we can obtain the originally transmitted 
carriers X1 and X2 and separate them even though they've been mixed through the multipath fading channel and the receive chains we can actually separate them with the equalizer with a zero forcing equalizer and obtain the original carriers X1 and X2 however we do have noise so we have this extra term which is a noise enhancement term and that's what we're going to consider in the next section so as we derive the zero forcing MIMO equalizer we notice that the estimate of the transmitted carrier for transmit path number one and number two for example for the two by three which we organize into the vector X has an additive term related to the noise of the receive chain so n is the vector of the noise and in the individual receive chains multiplied by the matrix W which was a pseudo inverse of the channel so what we are interested in is this term right here because if in fact the noise is zero then we recover the originally transmitted streams but in every communication system we are going to have noise and as it turns out the matrix W plays a huge role in noise enhancement as we shall show and of course W depends on the nature of the channel which is represented by the H matrix so let's take a look at the noise power again we have the term C here which is W times N which is a noise if we form the matrix C C Hermitian then we can write that as W times N times N Hermitian W Hermitian and let's take its expected value so the noise power is related to this matrix here since the noise is assumed to be additive white Gaussian noise and is independent with zero mean then as we take the expectation operator inside this expression here the expected value of n and Hermitian just becomes n sub zero where n sub zero is the one-sided power spectral density of the noise times w w Hermitian so this is how we can obtain the overall power of the noise due to the operation of the zero forcing equalizer and the additive noise in the receive chains so this is the term we want to investigate and see how it depends on the properties of the channel so let's take a look at the matrix H which is the channel H matrix and as we mentioned for a 2 by 3 system this will be a 3 by 2 matrix and let's decompose it into this singular value decomposition so we write H as U matrix U times Sigma times V Hermitian now for a singular value decomposition U and V are unitary matrices and U Hermitian times U is the identity matrix as is V Hermitian V both are square matrices so U is a square matrix and V is a square matrix Sigma is a diagonal matrix with real diagonal elements that are called the singular values and they are always organized from the largest to the smallest the fact that we can write H in terms of the singular value decomposition is very important in the analysis to follow and also we will use this representation of H in order to derive the structure for a MIMO system in which we use a closed loop system in which we feed back information from the receiver to the transmitter and we do beam forming to obtain very high performance in a MIMO system those will be covered later for now we're representing H in terms of its singular value decomposition now let's take a look at the term W W Hermitian let's go back and we notice that the power of the additive noise enhanced due to the zero forcing equalizer was related to W W Hermitian so we want to compute this matrix Omega zero forcing which is equal to W W Hermitian which enhances the noise now as we look at the expression for Omega zero forcing which is equal to W W Hermitian we substitute for W in terms of the 
pseudo inverse of the channel matrix so we get this expression over here and if you substitute for the pseudo inverse of the channel matrix let's go back and look at its definition over here back into that expression it simplifies to the following expression so now we substitute for H in terms of its singular value decomposition and we move in the Hermitian operator and V moves over here, U moves over there and of course we exploit the fact that U and V are unitary also in this case U Hermitian U is equal to the identity matrix we get Sigma Hermitian times Sigma, now notice that Sigma is always a real so Sigma Hermitian is just equal to Sigma and in this case we get a diagonal matrix with a square of the singular values and we also exploit the fact that V is also a unitary matrix and we get this expression over here now if we look at this expression we have the pseudo inverse of a diagonal matrix with a square with the diagonal elements being the square of the singular values so its inverse would just be 1 over the square of the singular values as shown over here now in this expression let's go ahead and factor out sigma 1 squared so we'll factor out 1 over sigma 1 squared so we just get 1 over here and over here we're going to get a very important ratio the ratio between sigma 1 squared divided by sigma 2 squared and we'll highlight that expression over here so we've factored out 1 over sigma squared and brought it out now here's the key point if we look at the matrix omega zero forcing which as this expression shows amplifies the noise then it grows as the ratio between the dominant singular value and the minimum singular value increases so so in the cases where the singular value the first singular value is much larger than the second singular value then this expression becomes very large and we get noise amplification so this is the key point I want to emphasize is the fact that if the channel is such that the ratio between the first singular value and the second singular value in this particular example is very large then we get a large noise enhancement let's go back to this definition here so we get a huge noise enhancement which will degrade the performance of the MIMO system so if we are using a zero forcing MIMO equalizer in a channel with noise and if that channel has singular values such that the ratio of the largest singular value to the smallest signal value is very large then we get a large amplification and the noise and a great deterioration and performance on the other hand if the ratio between the singular values is close to one because the maximum value for this ratio is equal to one which is also never achieved so if the ratio between the singular values is close to one again the ratio can only approach one and is always going to be less than or equal to one then we have less amplification of the noise and we have a better performing system we'll show some simulation results which verify some of this so again if we look at W which is related to the pseudo inverse of the channel what we've shown is that the factor which amplifies the noise the omega zero forcing shown here has a term which dominates the amplification of the noise which is related to the ratio between the singular values of the channel let's take a look at this situation here here we're simulating a MIMO system where the two transmit paths are 54 megabits per second so they have a 64 QIM constellation and it turns out that at the output of the MIMO equalizer one of the one of the transmit streams has a higher signal to noise ratio than the other transmit stream so for the carriers in X1 we have a larger signal to noise ratio than the carriers for X2 so we have a weak and a strong channel for this particular channel realization in this case the ratio between the singular values 
is large and we have an ill conditioning in the channel H matrix and a deterioration in performance. This is uh, the same transmit stream for X1 and the transmit stream for X2 for the MIMO equalizer. In this case we're using a 2x3 system. So in this result that we showed earlier, this is for a 2x2 system. We've added another antenna and we obtain a much better performance with the added antenna. So the added receive chain adds another degree of freedom in which the MIMO equalizer can separate the two streams in such a way that each stream has a higher single to noise ratio compared to the case of the 2x2 where we had a 2x2 system. So comparing this figure of the constellations with this figure for the 2x3 we observe that we get a much higher and better performance by adding the extra receive chain. Now here we're highlighting the stream for the carriers from X1 compared to the carriers for X1 for the 2x2 case. So here we have the constellation for the 2x3 case and here we have the constellation for the 2x2 case and you can clearly see the improvement and performance for when we add the extra receive chain. This is a very important plot of the histograms for a 3x3 system versus a 3x4 system. The histogram is the histogram of the singular value ratios, that is the ratio between the largest singular value to the smallest singular value in a 3x3 or a 3x4 system. If we go back and look at the noise enhancement expressions that we derived earlier, you'll notice that the noise enhancement is amplified when the ratio between the dominant singular value and the smallest singular value is large. So the larger this number, the worse the performance of a zero forcing equalizer and the more the enhancement of the noise. Now we can also show that when you have a 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four MIMO system that the noise enhancement is related to the ratio between the largest singular value to the smallest singular value. So in these curves here what we're plotting is a histogram of the singular value ratios between the largest to the smallest singular value for a 3x3 three three and a 3x4 system. These results were first presented in the paper by Gao, Osdural, and Ardalan and uh, Liu in uh, performance modeling of MIMO OFDM systems via channel analysis in September 2006 in the IEEE transactions on wireless and there are a number of results of the, from this paper that we will present that shed a lot of light onto the performance of MIMO systems in this case open loop MIMO systems. The solid curves by the way are actually analytical expressions that were derived in the paper and these are compared with actual simulation results over tens of thousands of channels, channel realizations in which the ratio of the maximum to the minimum singular value were obtained and the histograms were plotted as shown over here. Now, what's very important is to note that, let's take a look at the 3x3 three three case. If we have a large number of channel realizations where the ratio of the singular values is large, in this case very large, we're, we're exceeding 6, 8, 10, then in these regions here we have a lot of ill-conditioned channels and these channels and these channels have a very low single to noise ratio for the decoded streams and therefore cannot support high throughput or in other words they cannot support spatial multiplexing of high throughput streams. In this case is here we have to switch into a diversity mode and in this case of a diversity mode we will only use one spatial stream. For example like an MRC system in which we're using one spatial stream because as a figure here will show for example the one spatial stream will deteriorate considerably compared to the other spatial stream when you have ill conditioning or a high ratio between the 
largest singular value to the smallest singular value. So let's compare the performance of a 3x3 system cut with a 3x4 system. One of the beauties of these curves is that it clearly shows the benefit of adding a extra antenna to the receive chain. Compare the histogram for the 3x3 case to the histogram of the 3x4 case where we've added an extra receive chain. The number of ill-conditioned channels is much less than the case of a 3x3 as you can compare the two histograms. Also you'll notice that there are more channels that have a low ratio between the maximum and the minimum singular values which means that as the histograms are pushed toward the left, we realize more channels that can support spatial multiplexing and high throughput. Whereas in these regions here where we have a very high ratio between the singular values, we have to switch toward diversity mode and therefore reduce the throughput. The paper also presents results for 2x2 two two versus 2x3 system and we see the same improvement in performance when we add the extra antenna. So the next question is, let's actually run extensive and exhaustive simulations in which we simulate MIMO OFDM systems using a 2x2 two two system versus a 2x3 system and actually simulate and obtain the throughput versus the single to noise ratio. These curves here, which are also presented in the paper, were performed by Maltsev and Davidov and, and company and Nizhny Novgorod Intel Labs and are very useful. These, these throughput curves are the results of exhaustive simulations. So, for example, as we increase the single to noise ratio, the performance between the 2x2 two two and the 2x3 converge and we get a high throughput. At the higher signal to noise ratios we can support spatial multiplexing and in this case we can achieve the spatial multiplexing of two high throughput streams so we get double the throughput compared to a SISO case. However as we reduce the signal to noise ratio we see that the throughput decreases and we get throughputs that actually are below the case of the SISO and of course the SISO case as the signal noise ratio decreases you have to go to lower bit rates and use less dense constellations so these throughput curves incorporate the changing of the MCS so in these throughput curves as we decrease the signal noise ratio we're actually changing the modulation coding scheme or MCS. For example, we're going at the high throughput cases instead of using 64 QAM, we're actually using down here, for example, QPSK or BPSK. So we're switching the MCS as we reduce the signal to noise ratio. But the key point is that if we compare the 2x2 two two system with the 2x3 system shown over here, we see a dramatic improvement in performance by adding the extra receive chain and this verifies also the results that we showed before in terms of the histograms of the ratio of the singular values where adding an extra antenna pushes the performance toward supporting the spatial multiplexing of high throughput streams because the ratio of the singular value starts to approach one. Let's take a look at the performance for a 3x3 versus a 3x4 system. So here again we have the throughput curves for the 3x3 versus 3x4. So here we're showing the 3x3 and here we're showing the 3x4. And these throughput curves also verify the results that were obtained by plotting the histograms that were shown here for the 3x4 system versus the 3x3. And the difference, in fact, if you actually compute the mean value of the histograms, the difference in the mean values correlate very closely to the difference in dBs between the performance of the 3x3 system versus the 3x4. Let's go back to the performance of the 2x2 versus the 2x3 and you'll notice that we get around almost 4 dB improvement in performance by adding the extra receive chain 
and this also holds true for the case of 3x3 versus 3x4 so by adding the extra receive chain we get a 4 dB improvement in performance. As it turns out it's not a good idea to implement MIMO systems in either 2x2, 3x3 or 4x4. Even if you were going to implement a 4x4 it would be better to implement a 4x5. Of course we all realize the problems in adding extra receive chains both in terms of cost and spacing and placing of the antennas but for example it is always better to implement a 2x3 versus a 2x2 system and if possible a 3x4 versus a 3x3 system as these results clearly show.